students, welcome to chapter 5B, the next chapter of our matrices unit. Um, just bear in mind that uh, you do need to watch the previous video on 5A, uh, which is this topic or this section right here, in order to do 5B. So I'll put the link in the description below. Otherwise, these uh, the 5A video is also in um, our OneNote. So keep an eye out for it. All right, let's get into 5B. So what we're looking at in this session is understanding matrices with regards to network diagrams, okay? So a network diagram is basically a graph or a representation of the connections between different people, different places, um, different communications, or it could be from point A to point B. Okay, that's what the network diagram represents. Here is a example. This diagram below shows the roads connecting three towns, so P, Q, uh, Q and R. Okay, and it shows you all the different roads that basically connect the towns. So town P is connected to town Q via two roads. Town R and town Q are connected via three roads. And there's no direct road between P and R. As you can see, in order to get from P to R, you've got to go through Q. And vice versa, to get from R to P, you've got to go through Q. So that's what this represents. Okay. One thing that um, I will include as well is sometimes you have a graph, okay, where you've got, for example, in town P, a graph where, or a network diagram where there's what we call a loop. So this is saying now in this diagram, that P has a road to itself, okay? So that's how we understand how these diagrams work and how you read them. So now what's the connection with the matrices? Well, the question here for question A says here, we need to construct a three by three matrix called X to represent this information, where each entry, so each number, I'll put that in here, each number, represents the number of rows between the towns. So you might be asking, why does it have to be a three by three? Okay, well, it's gonna be a three by three because there are three dots, I'll call them now, three towns that need to be connected. Now this will be the same case, or this principle will be the same case regardless of how many dots there are. So if you have four dots, for example, then your matrix will be a four by four. If you had an extra dot and you drew all the connections to it, it'll be a five by five, okay? So the number of dots will tell you what the matrix is gonna be. So because there's three dots, it's gonna be a three by three matrix that you need to make. All right, so let's start with that. Question 3A, or oh, 1A, sorry. You need to make a three by three matrix called matrix X. So let's call this guy matrix X. It's a three by three matrix. So Make sure you've got enough space for your three by three. So what that means, three rows, three columns. So you're gonna have three rows and three columns going that way. One thing you need to include with these matrices is you should include, uh, you should label the sides. So let's call all the rows P, Q, R, and all the columns also P, Q, R, okay? Now, the way to read or fill in the information here is you're going to go from, for example, this first number here, you're going to call this from P to P. Okay, so if you look at this diagram, how many roads go from P to itself? Well, in this case, because there's no loop, it'll just be zero because there are no roads that go from P to itself. Okay, there's one road that goes P to Q and also another road that goes P to Q, but nothing directly back to itself. P to Q, as I mentioned, will have two roads. Okay, you've got one, two. And then P to R, okay, there's no roads, no direct roads that connect P to R. So that'll just be zero. All right, Q to P, let's do the next one. So Q to P, okay, let's look at Q going to P. You've got two roads. So you're gonna put the number two. Q to itself, 
There are no loops that go from Q to Q, so zero. And Q to R, you've got one, two, three. So three rows from Q to R. Now, R to P, last call, a last row. R to P have no direct rows, so that's going to be zero. Q, uh, R to Q, you've got one, two, three. Three rows that go from R to Q. And then R to itself, well, it's got no loop. Okay, so just zero. And there is our matrix for this network. And it, you can see that it shows you all the connections. So P to P, you've got zero. P to Q, you've got two. P to R has zero. Q to P, Q to Q, Q to R. And then also for the R row. All right, let's do the next question, question B. Question B asks us to interpret element X23. So this we've seen in the previous session and we understand what it means, but just to recap your mind, what this is saying is it's asking for what is in matrix X, what is in row two, column three. Okay, that's what it refers to. So X23. What is in row, so for matrix X, what is in row two, column three? Okay, what is that? And we also need to interpret the meaning of it. Okay, so in row two, column three of our matrix X. So if you look at the second row, which is this uh, row, and in the third column, which is this column, what do they intersect? Well, that number three. What does that represent? Where well, it tells you that there are three roads that go from Q to R. Okay, so three, and you'd write there three roads that connect Q to R. Okay, that's what you would write in terms of the interpretation. Cool. Question C, interpret the sum of row number two. Okay, so question C, we're looking at row two. So that's this row here. There's another color. Row number two. Okay, what does that mean? When you're talking about the sum, it just means to add them all up. So you're adding these three numbers up. So it's going to be two plus zero plus three. So which equals five. Now we have to also interpret it. So what does that mean? What does that number five mean if you add all these up? Well, it's all the roads that connect to Q, basically, or all the roads that Q can go to. So you can say five roads that connect. Sorry for the spelling. Q to other towns. Yeah, that's what that represents. All right. Question D. Draw the network diagram represented by matrix Y. Okay, so now we've got this matrix. We're going to turn it into a network. Okay, so right here. Matrix Y. Okay, so let's change this into a matrix, uh, into a network. So going back what we learned previously, remember what I said about here. This order tells you how many dots there's going to be in your diagram basically okay and because there's three dots there's also going to be a three by three for your matrix okay so if i look at this net uh, diagram with this uh matrix because there's three rows and three columns there's going to be three dots so let's draw them one two three and also unfortunately this uh, uh diagram so this matrix is not labeled in terms of what the rows and columns are. Let's just call it A, B, C, and A, B, C. This will help when we draw connections here. So let's call it A, that's B, and that's C. And now we draw the lines, the connections. So A to A has zero connection, so there's no loop. If there was, if that was one, for example, then you would draw a loop from A to A, but because there's none, well, you don't have to draw anything. A to B, you've got one connection. So let's draw the line for that. A to C, okay, I can see has two. So from A to 
to C. You've got to. Let me just fix that up. Two. B to A. Okay, so B to A. According to this, you've got one. And it's already in there, so I don't need to draw it. B to B. It's a B to itself. No loops. No self-connections. B to C, however, you've got a one connection there. So B to C. Got one. Okay, next, C to A, you've got two, so I've already drawn my two lines there, that's fine. C to B, you've got one there, and C to itself, well, again, it's zero, so that means it's no loop, no connection to itself. So that means that would be our matrix, our network for this matrix. So that's for B. And that's basically all you need to know for this lesson. Hey, if you have any questions, please let me know, but please go ahead and do uh, eight, uh, 5B, which are those questions. Thank you.